<laughs> we have something, hopefully that'll be fun for both of you. We have some fans who've called in who would like to speak to you and talk to you and maybe ask some questions. Uh, first up, uh, it's actually here in Philadelphia, of all places, uh, Andrea. Andrea, welcome to Soap Central Live. Thank you so much. This is an early Christmas present for me to speak to you two lovely ladies. And um, I'm just getting over cancer treatment, so it's just terrific. Thank you for being here for us. And first I wanted to, I had a couple questions. I wanted to ask how can we, and how and when can we hear pretty? Uh, well, I believe that you can just log on to it and, and see it at any time. There are three episodes already that have uh, been aired uh, for this season, and I think if you just uh, do a Google search on pretty the series, you can get uh, access to it. Wonderful, and wow. <laughs> and I have to tell you, I'll give away my age. I've been watching uh, General Hospital since 1968, and mm. I used to watch Denise on Days of Our Lives when she was fighting over Doug Williams. Oh, yeah. So that tells you <laughs> many years. Neither one of you look uh, any older. You're the only better. <laughs> and honestly, and um, I was wondering, it doesn't, I, I hate to be a pessimist, it doesn't look good for um, General Hospital to stay on the air because... They're going to put Katie Carrick on in the afternoon, probably. If the show, unfortunately, would be canceled, would you ladies consider coming back at least for, you know, a short time so they can maybe tie up the loose ends? And we would love to see you, even though I watch you every day on The Young and the Restless as well <laughs> and uh -huh. enjoy every uh -huh. moment of it. <clears throat> well, I can tell you that the way I feel about it is I'm more than happy to go and provide General Hospital and the fans with the happy ending that they would like to see, as long as I don't have to give up my job on Young and the Restless to do it. So the, the decision really rests in the hands of CBS and the producers I currently work for if they'd be willing to free me up or loan me out, as it were, for, for a period of time. That would be wonderful. I hope it doesn't happen, but uh, not looking good. And I'd like to hear your reaction, Jeannie. On the fire and all the fire, not the firing, the resignation of Brian Franz. He resigned. Yes, yeah, ma'am. Brian is. Today. We're gonna silence. We, we want to make sure that we go to the next call. So thank you, Andrew, for calling in. Thank you. So we'll much get Jeannie to answer that as we move to the next holiday. caller. He did. Uh, Jeannie's joined us a little bit later. He has stepped down uh, effective the end of January. He'll be uh, replaced. He, they don't have a new position for him, but uh, ABC Daytime is no more. It's being morphed into uh, another division that will focus mostly on the creation of uh, non-scripted programming. Oh, my God. I had no idea. When was this announced? This uh, about maybe five hours ago. Oh, oh my God. This is the first time learning of it. I, I absolutely had no idea. Wow! Uh, wow! I, well, uh, I don't know that I don't know that he's actually stepped down, or perhaps he has just moved on to another part of his career, because Brian's career, as, as I understood it, was starting to branch out into other areas. So um, it, it could be that this is just the closure of what was ABC's old daytime. It is certainly, regardless of how people feel about that particular decision, I think it's been a very emotional 2011 with cancellations of soaps and other rumors hanging overhead. And it's difficult for folks who really love this, this format, this genre, to see that it isn't sort of what it was when we were talking about 30 million people watching a wedding. I know, I know. It's such a sad thing. It really is that something that uh, was so powerful at one time could have fallen so drastically. Um, I personally believe that as long as you have a time slot, you have the same opportunity to make the same thing happen again. I absolutely believe that. Um, so it, for me, it's sad. I, I hate to see anybody throw in the towel. Well, I know that, uh, I know, Jeannie, that your time is sh cutting down here. I want to give you an opportunity to uh, 
thoughts on what's coming up for the holidays? Do you have any special holiday plans? And certainly uh, something I've noticed for folks who maybe have somebody on their list who is difficult to shop for, there's a lot of good stuff at the cherished home that they can go in and certainly get some gifts for people who are hard to shop for. Oh, funny. You know, we did just reopen our website, and we are trying to um, get that part of our business going again. It's such a hard time in our economy, you know, and, and I'm really trying to just keep that going for the people in Maine who have come to rely on it as their income. Um, so, you know, sure, I mean, we, there are some fun shopping opportunities on the Internet, and we certainly would welcome anyone's visit to the store. We're going to be shut through winter, and we're going to reopen, hopefully, with some new strength in uh, in June. And um, actually, my time is okay. I feel guilty that I <laughs> missed the first bit. So I, I can be with you for a few minutes longer. Don't, right. don't worry about that. Okay. Let's take uh, – we have a, some, we have people lined up, so let's go to Ohio. I believe we have David. David, welcome to Soap Central Live. Hello. Hey, David, you're Hello. on the Am air. I on? Yes. Hey, hi. I'm not, I'm not hearing you go through my end, but um, I just wanted to first quickly say that I have watched um, General Hospital actually before either Denise or Jeannie first even came. I started around five or six years old with my mom, and I saw the very first episode of Denise, and I saw Jeannie's first episode, and uh, like they were saying, their chemistry was just absolutely incredible, and the way they worked off of each other as far as actors was just it's just been a joy and an extreme pleasure to watch. They are both, actually, Denise, for as long as I've been watching GH, she still is my all-time favorite actress, period. Oh, and I'm watching so about 40 years Thank you so much. Thank you. How sweet. So this and, is your um, chance, Keith, David. Do you have a question for I would say the for same me? for you, and I'm wonderfully happy that you got a new job on Young and the Restless because I also I love Young and the Restless. I've been watching that show for 23 years, and I'm glad that now you have a stable job there. And, of course, we would love to see you come back to wrap that up, but I, but I would just say I'm just happy. Do not, you know, don't feel pressure. If it's going to cause trouble with where you are now, just stay <laughs> with where you are now because, you know, ABC is really, really not the best environment right now, unfortunately. And I'm just happy to see you with a wonderful job. I love the character of Genevieve as well. So it's just, it's, it's great for me either way. Oh, thank you, David. That is so kind of you. I think it means a lot, you know, to, it means an awful lot to me that you're willing to support me, even if it's not playing Laura. I'm, I'm very grateful for that. But I, too, would love to be there for the happy ending and the, the wave goodbye when this ends. Um, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, it, I have to do right by the people who I have signed my contract to. And um, so I leave the decision in, in CBS's hands. Well, thank you so much for calling, David. Jeannie, really quickly, for folks who maybe haven't made the move to see what's going on with your character on The Young and the Restless, can you give us a little bit of information about Genevieve and uh, maybe what fans can expect when they tune in? Well, right now the fans can expect a really cool story because we're in the middle of um, uh, sort of a, a, a threesome. There's someone uh, who is uh, pretending to be someone they are not. And um, I think actually Genevieve's life uh, could be in jeopardy, and you know it's going to it's going to turn into sort of a uh, sort of a thriller, if you will, for maybe a, a novella period, maybe six weeks or something like that. And I'm really looking forward to it. I think that Genevieve came on as an angry, bitter woman who had been so wronged by a um, by a man, by her husband, and this is sort of the story of her, you know, getting a happy relationship in her life, softening up again, and there's a new threat. And the new threat is coming from within her own house. And it will become sort of a thriller, I think. Um, I do not know how it ends. I hope I get to live because I'd like to keep my job. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't know. All I know is that it will be exciting for uh, a good couple of months. I think they're, they've got some hefty story there. We have time for one more quick caller. Uh, I'm not sure where they're calling from, but it's Michael. Michael, welcome to Soap Central Live. Oh, hi. I'm calling from Atlanta. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, 
this is a reunion that I just never thought I could be able to witness either on screen or on the internet. I'm just so excited and it's a funny time for me because I had my 30 year high school reunion last Saturday and of course that's back in the probably one of the heydays for General Hospital and of course I was watching back then and kind of grew up along with uh, Jeannie and Laura and all that. I'm just so excited to speak with both of you. Thank you. Oh, thank you uh, so much. <laughs> I I do remember, I understand Denise is quite the animal lover and animal rights advocate and I'll let you know I've adopted my two dogs from our local animal shelter. Oh, good uh, I think you. they You've make the best pets. Um, I, uh, uh, just a couple of comments, I guess. I, I agree with what Denise was saying earlier about reality, non-scripted shows versus scripted. Uh, some can be well-made but uh, in terms of uh, non-scripted, but I think there's something for me, and I'm sure for other people, I hope as well, that I think a scripted serialized program makes a difference because you you know that these aren't real people behaving badly and doing all these crazy things as opposed to thinking that there really are people out there that are living their lives this actual crazy way. Mm -hmm. I think the escapism of that uh, really resonates. So, I also think Michael... it's more fun to tell a story for a reason than, you know, if they... Uh, want to shine a light on something. The, the theater is artistic, and and you know, a scripted drama is meant to give a message. And you know, these are just peeking into, peering into people's lives in in. A